guys, it's me, Sydney. I am back today. It is a little chilly out here today at sea, hence my um, big orange Sherpa. <laughs> but I hope that everybody is doing well. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you guys about something I've been doing a lot of lately, and that is seven ways to pass the time while you're at sea. So the first thing and the main thing that I do to pass the time while I'm at sea is read. Before I head off on a crossing or a passage, I download heaps of books, at least four or five, because you might get bored of the one you're reading or it might be bad and then you want to read something else. Um, lots of books. I even usually bring sometimes a paperback book in case something happens and um, you know the power goes out and I can't charge my iPad. Um, yeah, have lots of options for books and for reading on board. The second thing I do to pass the time while I am at sea is I listen to podcasts. Um, one of my favorite podcasts of all time is The Lore Podcast by Aaron Minky. It has like all sorts of, you know, things that are commonly said or done um, in today's society that come from some strange folklore story. It's got lots of little cool bits of history, um, all sorts of stuff. I also listen to his... Um, Noble Blood podcast and his Kevin of Curiosities podcast. Um, those are some of my favorites. He's a very talented podcaster. I also listen to a lot of like travel agency podcasts, um, you know, to learn how to be a better travel agent. Yeah, I really like history and work podcasts. So, yeah. <laughs> the third thing that I tend to do a lot while I'm at sea that I haven't actually done on this trip, um, but usually I'm like always doing this is, is because I've been outside mostly is um, I play solitaire a lot of solitaire or you know cards in general but you know solitaire is something you can do by yourself maybe that makes me super nerdy and like an 80 year old woman at heart but I quite enjoy a nice game of solitaire the fourth thing that I do um, while I'm at sea is I write. Um, I've written probably six or seven blogs since I've been out here. I've written outlines for nine YouTube videos. Um, yeah, so I do a lot of writing while I'm at sea because I guess when you get sick of reading, you write. <laughs> um, but you don't have to, you know, if you're not a blogger, or you're not a YouTuber, you don't have to write, you know, blogs. You can write letters, you can write anything really. I mean, write a creative story, write a poem, you know, it's, you know, it's, you're at sea, you have so much time to like spend on just your creativity. And it's something, you know, most people don't do, you know, since the time they're in grade school and they're little. So I think it's really important to, you know, sometimes get into that little creative side of your brain and really work on that. So next time you're at sea, pick up a pen and paper or your computer and type away something. All right, the fifth thing that I love to do that I, I haven't done this trip either, but that's because I don't have any Marlin Spike stuff on board, is to practice your Marlin Spike skills and to practice your rope work. So practice your different knots, practice your splices, practice um, your decorative rope work, all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's, you know, you have endless hours to like practice and perfect. Um, you know, you could decorate something nicely, you know, with some, some line work and, you know, really just kind of spruce up the boat. You can make a nice bell rope if you wanted. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you could do um, to just kind of pass the time in that sense. And it's, again, it's fun, it's creative. You know, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, splicing mooring lines or anything, but you know, you can do something fun that, you know, you might normally not do just because of time and whatever. <laughs> Okay, so the sixth way um, to pass the time at sea that I think is a bit of a challenge, something that's challenging for me even on land, uh, but also a challenge is getting in the galley and cooking. You have so much extra time, um, you know, buy some cookbooks before you go, download some recipes, um, and practice your galley skills. I mean, there's very few times where you have uninterrupted, unlimited time to cook something besides when you're underway. Obviously, you know, the heel of the boat's gonna add a little bit of pressure to it. Um, but if you can withstand that sort of pressure, you know, I think that it's a great thing to get into the galley and practice your cooking. And it's definitely something to do to pass the time, whether it turns out to be decent food or not, is another story. 
And the seventh and last thing, um, not the last thing there is to do at sea, but of the things that I tend to do while I'm at sea, is um, all of your self-care. I do hair masks, face masks, um, I don't usually paint my nails or anything, but you know, all of the little like health, you know, self-care stuff, I do my teeth whitening, um, all of that kind of stuff, I do, I'll do this at sea because, um, you know, nobody cares if I have a hair mask and like, you know, I have the time to leave it and sit it in for two hours and carry on with what else I was doing. Same with face masks, um, my teeth whitening stuff, you know. So it's a great time to kind of get all of your little self-care, um, self-care done and, you know, you need a little foot bath, all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Um, about the seven things to do to pass the time while you're at sea. If you enjoyed it and you like what I have to say, please go ahead and like it. Hit the subscribe button. I did that backwards. Whatever. Um, and thank you guys for coming and watching. I will chat to you soon. Have a lovely day.